Wednesday night, off the rails on tour, heads to Swords. Paris is also on the itinerary, and of course, there's the presenter challenge with Sonia and Brendan. That's tomorrow night at 8, but now, Shortland Street. I will come and I'm ready. Oh, well, I hope you and the serial killer enjoy the night here. Steve, can I get a ride home and save money? Well, of course. I just need to pick something up for my mates. Right. Don't worry. I'm not going to dump your body in a money skip or anything. Well, not tonight, anyway. Beyond, hang on. Miller Street, Ferndale South, I think. Yeah, that's the one. Okay, how long? Sooner would be better. Alice Piper. Okay, that's great. Thank you. You going home soon? I'll walk you to your car. Oh, give me a minute. While I'm here, I thought maybe I'd have a sneaky peek at the shortlist. Sorry? For Claire's job. Mother, that's highly confidential information. I knew you were going to do this. Well, I wouldn't be doing my job if I wasn't. Do I have to walk to the car on my own now? No. Give me two ticks. I'm withdrawing my offer if you're going to be too long. Here you go. What's this? The shortlist. I was just teasing. You rotten thing. I twisted Chris's arm and made him promise to make a decision first thing in the morning. You're brilliant. I told him you'd walk if you had to deal with any more sulky temps. I hope you didn't. He knows I'm not like that. Have you had a look? Yes, I've made my pick, but you're the one who has to work with whoever it is. Well, they all look pretty good. Who do you like? Uh, oh, this one. Heavens. Men don't usually apply for reception jobs. I had a thought about that and... I wouldn't keep seeing Claire all the time. Exactly. Might make it a bit easier to deal with. Well, he certainly looks nice and presentable. <laughs> I wonder if he can multitask. Some men can. Getting a beer from the fridge at the same time as watching the rugby isn't multitasking, Libby. He's got a good CV. Heaps of experience in clerical and reception. Man, freak me out. I've been looking for you everywhere. Uh, are you okay? What's happened? No, nothing's happened. I'm going home in a cab. A cab? Oh, mate, you're going to wait on me. Come on, hop in the car. I'll, I'll take you home. No, thanks. I'm, um, the cab's on its way. If you can cancel it. I'm not cancelling it. I, I can have you home in ten minutes. You can't wait here for a cab. I'm fine. Just go. Go! Alice? Touch me and I'll scream so loud I'll shatter both your eardrums. You friend of me. I wanted a ride home, not a detour to this hellhole. Okay, okay, calm down. Everything's cool. I'll drive you straight home. I'm not going anywhere with you. Oh, you think I'm some sort of creep? A little detour to pick up my footy jersey, and you go mental on me. You're back. For what it's worth. Come here. Ooh. You look exhausted. Are you sure you should be back at work? I'd rather be here than at home. Do you want a cup of coffee? I'll get it. You sit down and tell me about the rest of the tangy. I thought they were never going to let you go. Jay's mum had to get back to Sydney. So Victor drove her down. I grabbed a lift. The father certainly made a big fuss of you, didn't they? Especially the aunties. It was almost embarrassing. Why? Well, Jay and I had broken up. But you made your peace at the end. Yeah. And I wanted the baby to know Jay. Now all they find out want me to stay in touch, take Bobby up to see them. The two of you won't be making any trips too soon. Oh, no, but it's nice to know that they want to be part of the baby's life. They were so kind to me, so giving. Well, they could see how much you were hurting. Yeah. Well, in the middle of everything, all the tears and the talking, just kept thinking, this shouldn't be happening. 
shouldn't be here. Jay in a coffin. Just that wrong. Hi. Hi. How long is this going to go on for? Just try and be patient. It's lucky I've got this whole other family, isn't it? Hit me. Anywhere you like. Hard as you like. Accept the face. Go on. Do it. Get it over with. This is because you were such a pillock last night? I am a pillock. Hit me. It'll make you feel good. Shut up and get me a coffee. You're forgiven. So did you party on? No. Oh, I did a really, really stupid thing last night. That's not like you. <laughs> so you're going to tell me so I can tell Craig? Okay. So it wasn't that stupid thing. I had one more wine, and Steve gives me a ride home. Everything's fine, we're driving along, and then suddenly he starts going on about the murders and joking about how I'm hot and just the kind of girl the killer goes for and that it's been a while since the last one. Okay. Anyway, I let it go until he announces that we're making a detour to his mate's place to pick up his footy jersey. We end up in the WAPS, and he leaves me in the car to wait. You're going to tell me I'm such an idiot in a minute. You're freaked out. Totally, but it gets worse. I look in the glove box and there's an open pack of latex gloves in there. And that's when I freak out, <laughs> jump out of the car and run away and call a cab. Oh, God, it sounds so pathetic now. No, no, fair enough. You get the whole fight or flight thing, you go with it. No arguments. <sighs> Except that now, today, I mean, Steve's not a creep. He's just... No guy that doesn't get it. <sighs> he definitely thinks that I think he's Jack the Ripper. <sighs> He'll live. Just tell him if he doesn't understand... He's an idiot. It's my daughter's wedding next month. I never thought it would happen. Are you married, Tanya? No. No nice doctors snapped you up, then. They're not all that nice, believe me. And uh, I don't discuss my personal life with patients. Well done. Sorry about that. If you've got any questions about your surgery, as long as you're sure. Sorry again, Tanya's had a bit of a stressful day. Oh, your nurses work so hard, you're wonderful. We got the one we wanted, but Chris doesn't know you know, so act surprised. Morning. Yvonne, I would like you to meet Gerald Tippett, your new buddy on the desk. I'm very pleased to meet you. Welcome to Shortland Street, Gerald. Thank you. I'll let you two get on with it. I hope that Libby has shown you around. Yep, I've had the grand tour. I'm impressed. Pop up to my office later and I'll have your ID ready. Oh my goodness. Uh, what is that? That's Claire. She used to work here. The murder victim? Oh, she was very attractive. Was she nice with it? Very. She obviously fell in with someone not so nice. <laughs> or do you think it was totally random? You know they do say that most murder victims know their killers. Must be putting the fear of God into women around here. <laughs> I guess you feel safe, though, you know, being older. One of the big things about this job is the need to be sensitive to different cultures and backgrounds. Oh, yeah, you know, I know all about that. Yeah, done the course, got the T-shirt. You'll find I don't need much hand-holding. Let's just get on with the job, shall we? Mm -hmm. 